Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here. Today is January 30th, 2020. This is your virus update. Now, today, there's 8,235 people who have the virus. Uh, that's confirmed cases, you know. And that's from John Hopkins, uh, their page. And also, we have 171 deaths and 143 recovered people from it. Well, I'm going to tell you. I saw a video yesterday, you know, and I'm not going to play the video here because it's probably copyrighted. But here's what it entailed. It was a hidden camera. Now, most of these taxi cabs nowadays, you don't know it, but you're probably being filmed if you're in a taxi cab. Well, especially in China. I think every practically every taxi cab has a little pinhole camera mounted up near the dashboard, you know. So they film everything nowadays, All probably all the taxis, you know. Uh, so... This taxi cab driver, evidently, he was driving through, and it was probably not in uh, Wuhan. It was outside the quarantine zone. And he picked up this guy, and the guy got in and sat next to him, and he already had a passenger in the back seat, and they all had masks on because everybody's got masks on now in China. It's, 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 uh, they have to. It's a law. They have to wear masks. So they all got in there wearing masks, and the guy was coughing. So the taxi cab driver started talking to the guy, and the guy said, I want to go to the hospital, you know? And uh, the taxi cab driver immediately got a little bit alert because the guy was coughing and saying he wants to go to the hospital, and then he started asking him, where are you from? Where are you from? And eventually the taxi cab driver got it out of him, and he told him where he was from. And he was from Wuhan. Immediately, a taxi cab driver was like, whoa, 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 you know, he was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and the guy was coughing all over him and everything. He said, get out of my cab, get out of my cab. So the guy got out of his cab, you know, and the taxi cab driver was too stunned even to drive off. He was just sitting there, and he was like, what do I do? And then he, and after about 30 seconds went by, he said, call the police, call the police, call the police. So evidently, Wuhan is supposed to be containing all these people in the city of Wuhan, but a lot of them have visited Wuhan during this uh, big festival to the New Year or whatever, you know, and they want to go back home. And so it's just human nature to sneak out. And I mean, okay, they cordoned off the highways and stuff, you know, leading out. But people can go on foot and then grab a taxi or whatever once they get past the quarantine area. And a lot of these people might have the virus, you know. And anyway, China's already got it seated in almost every county, every jurisdiction within China is seated. The virus has seated itself. And this virus is so contagious. It's so contagious it's about double as, con double as contagious as the flu, if you can imagine that. Imagine something as double as contagious as the flu. And you know how hard it is to keep from catching the flu, especially if the flu is going around. You know what I mean? This thing's twice as contagious. And so if you touch a doorknob or whatever and touch around your face, you got it. Or if you get within proximity of somebody and they're sneezing or something, you got it. You know? And I don't altogether trust these masks and stuff. I mean, you know, maybe if you get the right kind of masks, but a lot of these masks are not not the right kind of masks. Now, the right kind of masks, is that even 100% foolproof? I don't think so. They leak around the sides, air leaks around them and everything else, you know? And it's hard to breathe in them things. Your face gets sweaty after a little while, you know, and 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 it's it slows down your ability to uh, uptake oxygen, you know, and stuff. Uh, so this is quite a crucial situation, and I'm going to just give you guys my opinion on it. I think that there's 1.4 billion people in China. And China's made a desperate attempt to try to stop this in Wuhan by closing off these cities and stuff. But 
I don't think it's going to work. That's my opinion. My opinion only. I don't think it's going to work. I think this thing's going to spread through China. One of the things is, if you were to take per square mile in China, the people per square mile are very tightly, there's like so many people per square mile. If you go to here to like Canada, people per square kilometer, let's say people per square kilometer, the number would be very low. Compared to China, it's a, enormous, the amount of people per square kilometer. And so this means the people are much closer together, much more tightly packed, easier to spread it. There's 1.4 billion people in China. And now I hear of a case in India. It's spread to India now, you know. Now, one of the big question marks in my mind at this point is, can we contain it and keep it out of North America? Well... If we were to take drastic measures right now, maybe we could. Maybe, but it was gonna, it's going to take a, a big effort. It's not going to be something simple or small to keep it out of North America. Because we've already had, what, seven cases? I think two, in, two or three in Canada and like five in America, you know? And, and so far, I don't think it's spread, in, it's spread into the general population yet in America. It's time to really, it's time, in my opinion, it's time to take action, you know, here in North America to prevent it from coming here. Because I look at, I look today at the official death toll from this thing, and it's about 2.2, I think they said. Now, that's their official, uh, but uh, these numbers from China, I just don't know, okay? I don't know. I don't... My opinion only, I don't fully trust these numbers coming out of China to, to try to adjust the death toll on it yet. It's just, it's an unknown quantity, you know. It could be less or it could be more. I'm just not exactly sure. And these viruses also have the ability to mutate. It could become less lethal or it could become more mortality. I mean, it's just hard to tell at this point in time. But one thing we do know for sure, this thing is a catchy. This thing is very, very bad that way. I mean, it's, it's something that I believe personally it's airborne. And also I believe you can catch it from just somebody sneezing on you or touching that door handle or doorknob. I think this thing's bad that way. I think it's very, very catchy. And I, I, I'm going to give you guys my honest opinion. I think this thing is going to come. It's come real quick out of nowhere. And I think it's going to leave out of nowhere real quick. I think by the end of the year, we're pretty much going to be over. And it's going to be on its way out. And I think 24 months from now, or two years from now, you won't be able to find this virus anywhere but in a lab. That's my personal opinion on it. Because I think it's going to move so fast through... Unless they do something drastic to stop it, I, I think it's going to move so fast, and and it's gonna it's going to basically, uh, it's basically gonna uh, got the world by hammerlock, you know. Uh, it's 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 going to move so fast that 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 it, I mean, it's I think it's going to all be all mostly over by the end of the year, even. I think, you know, unless it goes through a second wave, and I don't think it's going to. I think it's just going to just surge through everywhere. and just That's my opinion only. And, I mean, I'm entitled to my opinion, and I believe that it's going to disappear. In other words, come in a flash and gone in a flash. And I, I think that the results from all of this, what's going to be even worse than the virus, is the economic situation that it's going to generate. Because we were ready for that to happen anyway. I mean, the world's over leveraged. I think the economic depression that it's going to cause is going to be more severe than the night than the than the Great Depression of the 1930s. More severe worldwide, and I think that is going to cause a higher fatality, much higher than the virus. Now, this is my personal opinion. I think that is going the virus it's going to cause 10 times indirectly the collapse of the world economy that this virus is going to 
start in motion is going to cause 10 times the cost of human life that the virus causes. And I think the virus is going to cost a lot. So, you know, are you ready for a world with only 6 billion people in it? I mean, this is basically my opinion of where we're headed here with this, you know. And I think that mainstream are going to have basically come around to having my opinion within the next month. In other words, I'm telling you guys up front what my opinion is, but I think mainstream is going to adjust to my opinion within a month. It's going to take them about a month from now. And then they're going to be saying basically the same thing that I've just said. That's what I think, and that's my opinion on it. And so I know that's not a good opinion on it, but, I mean, you know, uh, it's going to be right on the edge. It's like a razor's edge there. If something gets a little bit worse, too much worse than what it is, that it could cause societal collapse, which is even worse. I think it's right on the edge of the governments being able to maintain control when this thing moves through. It's going to be right on the edge. The mortality rate and the amount of sick people there are caused from this is going to be right on the edge of them being able to just barely hold control. And I've been weighing it in my mind over the last couple of days whether or whether or not they're going to be able to basically, I think they are. I think they're going to be able to maintain control. But I think it's going to be touch and go there when the virus is at its peak. I think things are going to be really rough. And I think that we're going to go through a very, very bad year indeed this year. I think it's going to be the worst year since the great stock market. Worse, worse than the world wars. But ultimately, in the end, I think we're going to come through this. And on the other side of this, you know, I think that the world is, is going to be a little bit more united in the end because of this. Uh, I'll, t I'll, give you, I'll give you an example why. You know, I remember years ago when I was in grade school, there was a couple boys there, and they hated each other's guts. You know? And, and they were about, I guess, about eight years old, the two of them, you know, these boys. Hated each other's guts, and they got in this big fight. You know, and they were rolling around the ground, and they were really, you know, like punching and everything else, you know, and they got them and they pulled them in, they took them into the principal's office, you know. Well, they were sitting there waiting for the principal, and the principal just left them in the chairs there, sitting there side by side waiting and waiting to go into the... Now, this was years ago, back when schools were much stricter than they are now. In fact, our school had... Uh, punishment they used to uh, paddle the kids, you know. They, they could actually spank them. And hard, too. <laughs> you know. So these boys were waiting to see the principal. And they knew they were in big trouble. You know. Principal just let them sit there for about two hours. And I remember walking by them, you know. And they were mad, look, giving each other these mad, mad looks, you know. And then I walked by them about an hour or two later and they were starting to make friends and walked by and he left them there for a long time you know uh, i guess before he called them in and you know by the time by the time he was ready to call them in they were kind of like playing jokes with each other and they were made friends they made friends sitting there waiting to see the principal they they lost their differences because they had both had something in common at that point and it was that they were both frightened of the punishment, you know? Well, the world is sort of like that. Uh, I mean, the whole world is, is like, they were right, mankind was getting right on the edge. You know, they're getting edged up, right? Uh, but this is like a giant punishment 
this virus. I mean, where did it come from? Come from nowhere, but it's like it's almost like we're all in the principal's office together. The whole world. With an unst one un unseeable, unstoppable enemy against us all. You know? Anyway, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. We'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.